second warm-up lap uh, for this uh, Telecom production saloon car race. One of the real excitements of a very busy weekend here at Mandela. Franco Rook is going to be on pole position. Reg Tuttle alongside him. They're both in escort turbos. Then John Hayes, who we hope to be talking to by air cell telephone during the race in his Peugeot, making that three on the front row of the grid. Turbos on the second row of the grid in the shape of Gordon Kellett. Michael Fitzgerald has the quickest of the Capris there. It's a tremendous mixture. It's a type of racing that both my Myself and Brian shoot have enjoyed in the past, and it really looks like it could be a good one, Brian. This could be Frank O'Rourke, who is uh, an amazing man in saloon cars here, production saloons, a champion many times over the years, but he did a time this morning that I thought would never be done with a production saloon in Mandela of 66.98 seconds. His previous lap record, which he got this year, of 67.6 brought it down. John Hayes, can you hear me? Have you formed up on the grid? Yes, I can. Um, Bus I it, was, now, yeah. it was busy out there on the warm-up lap, John. Any problems? No problems at all. I think Reg has a problem, though. Yes, I, I see Reg, Reg Tuttle is in the pits with a problem. Yes. Yes. But well, that obviously means he's going to start from the back of the grid now. Can you give a thumbs up to the camera there, John, if everything's all right, so the people yeah, at home know you're OK? Yeah. Right, John. Yeah. John, that leaves you a gap in the front row. Do you reckon you can get the jump on um, Frank O'Rourke? Uh, I don't think I've got the jump on Frank, but it's up to me to fill the gap that's empty at the moment. I don't let anybody else through. The problem is you have Ray, I can see Kellett has actually turned the wheels, John. I shouldn't be telling you this, but he's yeah. actually pointing for that gap, John, so be yeah. careful. OK, right, here we go. And the news is that Reg Tuttle is starting from the pit road, but it's a pretty vacant, and John Hayes pulling that cross there, as you can see, that gap, and everything is a little bit behind, but the escort turbo must have the power, and it's Frank O'Rourke in the Castrol's auto retro car that leads for the first time into Telecom Corner. John Hayes in second place, and at the back, Reg Tuttle, who will be joining them shortly with an awful lot of traffic minding to do. We see Tony Brennan getting very sideways there in the black escort as he came out on the straight. Yes, and Frank O'Rourke, a copybook star. John did his best, got alongside him, but the problem is, if you leave it too open, very well, Helmut Helfeld there in the other Peugeot getting it very, very wide, but John hanging on to the back of this. And we can hear this, the revs from the John's car, the little wheel lifting off the ground, third place man there, Michael Fitzgerald in the Capri, followed closely then by Gordon Kellett. Not a great start by Gordon, but I expect him to start to move and make a dive. The Castro car of Frank O'Rourke really close on his bumper. John Hayes hanging on well there, Alan. Tremendous. It's a 1.9 litre Peugeot. It doesn't have a turbocharger. Yes, John. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be able to keep it. He's got past Frank. Right, well, you seem to be OK behind, John. Uh, you put, pulled out a little bit of gap for the Capri, but obviously O'Rook is the target. So we let him get on with his work. John Hayes there in second place at the moment to cheekily making a pass, is he? Yes, this is where John's car really outhandles the old escort. He's trying to round the outside. Now, remember, the reason John is doing this is not for this car, is the fact that the next one is a left-hander, and if he can get the inside line for the left-hander... Oh, <laughs> nice one, John. The mammy has just dropped a stitch, right? But I tell you, you nearly dropped Frank that time. Closing up, John Hayes. Closing up through the twist there. A work definitely has the power in a straight line, but John looks as if he can outhandle him in the tight bits, Alan. Yes, and let's bring you up to date on the rest of the race because back up this job. But look at John Hayes now. As you can hear John Hayes there saying he has the legs in the tight corners and he has them under braking. He keeps getting up on two wheels. But down the straight, the power of the Escort Turbo really showing, but then coming into the turns, the superior handling or the superior driving possibly of John Hayes, he's really back on his bumper. I've seen John pass a few cars coming down to the S's here and he has a habit of pretty hard work at the back there all the time. Close the arms out of me. 
If you watch that back wheel, that back left-hand wheel of the Peugeot just bobs off the ground as they come into that left-hand. And look at the gap they've pulled out these three now. And I think, I think we're missing Gordon Kellett from this list. Yeah, we definitely are. We're missing Gordon Kellett in the Polistel car. And there he is. The Polistel car stopped on the outside, so that's two turbos down. And oh! That was Bob Montgomery. Or was somebody off on the right-hand side, too. There's a spinner in the middle of it all. Still going around. Michael Armstrong, who has a habit of uh, going off in strange places, but uh, Mad Mike he's known as. But there's our race leader, first, second, third place man, Michael Fitzgerald, the Anderson Lodge Capri, showing well. Michael and Thomas McGovern in the other Capri are usually much closer. John Hayes, you can have a listen for John Hayes. He tries down the outside. And he's got it. John Hayes has got uh -oh. through into the lead. John, fantastic. Can you hold on to it? And they're just coming up now to the scene, and we've got another one. We have a major incident here. I didn't know you could do that. It looks like uh, Thomas McGovern's car. Thomas LaRook's car, I'd say. John, there's a major prang, a telecom corner, John, if you can hear us. A major prang, a telecom corner, John. Hey, oh, yeah, I don't think I can hold it now. John, if you can hear us, there is still a major prang, a, a telecom. They have cleared it, six cars involved, and by the time the leaders got round, totally cleared. You saw in the last shot where there was two cars. That's the work of the marshal. There's one of them, the Capri there, badly bent over. But I do believe that John is oh, hanging on to the lead. If you could hear him, he said that Jean felt that Frank was playing with him. If you have time, John, could you give us a rundown on what's happening? too busy there. John is too busy, as you can see. Frankie. John moves to the right-hand side of the road coming up the hill, so he blocks Frank's entrance. Now, it's here with the superior power of the... Yes, he goes right again now. I'm he's he's just down not the home. straight. He's down the straight, so it's up to John now to get in behind him for the tow. And these two are pulling away from Michael Fitzgerald in third place, and that's Shay Lawless there in fourth place. We oh, lost yeah. Gordon Kellett, and that's Thomas McGovern in the Capri, followed by Tony Brennan there in the black escort, doing well, really in there behind Jerry O'Reardon. And it's oh, boy. John Hayes back in the lead again. Where did you do that, John? We didn't see it. John there, busy, as we can see. So they're coming and exiting Budweiser, the liquid pressure at the moment, holding off the turbo. The turbo has the power on the street, as you can see, he can close, but John trying everything. Look at the back wheel of that Peugeot, and what do you think? Absolutely amazing. It's a, a superb performance, because we know that Franco Ruck is capable of going well underneath the lap record speeds. Indeed, we're keeping a good uh, eye on that. Okay, come on, there is something wrong with Frank's car, because here's me, what's good for me down the face? You probably catch me here again now. Even John's performance had his own. You can hear John Hayes there. He thinks that there could be something wrong with Frank O'Rourke's car because he didn't pull the ground on the straight that time. And he's saying it could be his lucky day. Frank O'Rourke has right. a problem. John Frank has definitely got a problem. Look in your mirror, baby. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. You're right. A lot of smoke. I don't believe this. I'll have to take it a little bit easier now. You get more time to talk to us, John. So John Hayes, way out now on his own as he comes back down into the Subaru S's here. And once again, you see the little Peugeot cocking that inside rear wheel. And he must have now a 10, 15 second advantage over the new second place man, who will be Michael Fitzpatrick. So the old Capri's beginning to come back into the reckoning. on a Friday night, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> now this is our new second place man, Michael 
Fitzgerald in the Addison Lodge, and the third base man, Shay Lawless, in another You heard John there now, he's got such a handy lead, he's going to ease off, but he can't ease off that much. John, if you have time and you can hear us, maybe you would talk us around the back of the circuit of what you're doing. And of course, this is one of the times where the driver really has to watch out. He realizes he's got the lead, the pressure is off, uh, but the concentration must remain. He's going to be completing his eighth lap of a 15-lap race, so he's still got a long way to go, uh, John Hayes. There's uh, the second place man, Michael Fitzgerald, number 22, coming down over the hill. And uh, just a couple of years ago, Capris were all conquering here. John just saying there that he's coming up on by some back markers, so he may have a problem. Jerry O'Reard is his back marker. And Jerry O'Reardon has just had a big moment because the car in front of him had an enormous moment as they came out of Dunlop. So that's uh, very wise of Hayes to watch out for back markers. Sometimes in incidents like this, it can cause a lot of problems. Now, he's got to choose his place carefully. If he can get uh, the sunbeam on the straight, he should be all right. That's Eddie Kenny. He's going past down the straight. That's no problem. He's picked that one off. But Jerry O'Reardon... Number 44 will be a different problem. In fact, it's Greg Conway uh, in that motor car. It's Greg Conway had a moment there, so now John is coming up to lap him, just coming into the S's. And there's John Hayes in the 88, the air cell car. John, if you can hear us, maybe you tell us what the situation in the race is now. now. John is enjoy really enjoying himself. It's Jerry O'Reardon there. Old friends, old enemies on the track. And he actually say goodbye, Jerry, as he went by him. But Jerry's a shrewd man. He knows there's television. If the camera's on the leader, I'll try and stay with him because he did have a moment. He should have been much further up the grid, but he obviously had a problem. So John Hayes now coming down into Budweiser, drops it into third gear. Jerry O'Reardon there from Tala and the Fleetwood Capri. John Hayes is even getting cocky, saying it's very lonely out there. He has nobody to play with. Or maybe if you can hear us, John, you can do a bit of commentary if you're lonely. Obviously, he's not hearing us. He's just coming in. But he can't hear us for what we want him to say, but he's doing his own commentary as he comes through the S's. That car in the background is not in second position. That's one John has just lapped. Our second position man is still Michael Fitzgerald, number 22 in the red and white Capri. So John Hayes, a lonely first place at the moment. So Hayes has been in the business of motor racing for well over 25 years. We won't say exactly how many. Uh, really going to have another glory day by the look of it here at Mandela. They've completed 10 laps of this 15-lap race, and as John said, it's getting a bit lonely out there. But Gordon Kellett, we notice, has rejoined the action, so his stoppage was very brief. And indeed, it's been a very bad day oh, for the escort fellows. Yes, I can, John. Hello. Yes, John, you're coming home from London. It's getting very lonely here. <laughs> Nobody's talking to me. We're looking at Shay Lawless there just for a minute, coming through picture, but there's back with John Hayes as he comes down the Subaru S's once again. It's a very tricky bend, that indeed, because you've got to get right across, and that is one of the fastest corners in the circuit, and really quite a frightening one, because you come in at very high speed. You can see Jerry O'Reardon cocking the Capri in the background. He's already been lapped, remember, as indeed has a little sunbeam behind him, and that's uh, Eddie Kenny. And that's, there is the second place man. That's Michael Fitzgerald, there is the third place man, Shay Lawless, in the Yonkley car. And we're back uh, looking at, uh, oh, and somebody in trouble, second place man. 
is in big trouble. A lot of smoke there. Yes, just to come over the brow of the hill, there seems to be a lot of smoke. Maybe just to where he changed gear, but it's a, it's a dangerous sign to start to get puffs of smoke. It usually means that you've over revved it. Now, there is the... No, that's Jerry O'Reardon. I was going to say that's our second place, man. That's actually Jerry who has been lapped. So we're waiting on Michael Fitzgerald to come down to Budweiser. We're back there now with John Hayes, uh, the Irish motorsport champion for 1987. Um, the Dunlop Motorsport Championship is the prestigious event of the year, and John was voted the driver of the year by the Dunlop panel. So that's our leader, John Hayes, in the oh, Peugeot 1.9 GTI. I think I'll have a go on the motorcycle racing down here next time, because this thing is almost too much. And here's the Allison Lodge car in real right trouble, here, also sponsored by Jones Oils, and I think it's losing a little bit too much of that at the moment, because Shay Lawless seems to be closing up, and there's that other Capri now that's really coming into tension, Thomas McGovern. Then the whole battle of stock number 44, a uh, relative newcomer to the Capri class, Greg Conway in there. Number six just going through the picture at the moment is Miles Moran. And there's our race leader way out ahead. And surely it can't be too long till uh, he's going to get into more traffic problems. Jerry O'Reardon, the back marker. We've got uh, three laps to go when he comes round uh, to complete this one. And there he goes once again, three wheeling, the little one point nine front-wheel drive Peugeot, the main difference in outside appearance to the 1600 Peugeot, of course, are the larger wheels. And John Hayes there, our race leader. There's a rumour John is going up to a larger Peugeot next year so that he can have the legs of the turbos, but it's a strange thing in motor racing, Alan. He was complaining that he didn't have the legs of Frank in a straight line, and then all of a sudden, an unfortunate problem for Frank, and we end up with John in the lead, and what he says is a lonely lead at that. Yeah, indeed, the panic at the moment is a bit like a turbo dead car park, because uh, Gordon Kellett has just come in in his car, and already we've uh, Rosemary Smith's car, well, she never got a decent race in her extravision car, it's uh, already parked, we've lost Franco Rook, we've lost Reg Tuttle, so all four of the Escort Turbos are sadly out of this one. John now, Hayes. coming up on a very interesting car here, Mike Dunian, uh, in his first ever motor race, very well-known rally man at the dealer Opal Little Corsa there, car that's for sale, incidentally, Mike Dunian having a great experience out on the racetrack at Mandelo as opposed to the stages of Ireland. Mike, who's from uh, Donegal, and indeed his brother, uh, is also in the rally business. And there is the leader going through. We have now the long, long gap to second place, man. This is not him. This is uh, Jerry O'Rear. There is the car. Michael Fitzgerald been caught by Shay Lawless, so we've got quite a battle between the two Capris for second place now. Shay Lawless, the former Volkswagen driver and uh, many-time Irish Hill Climb champion, coming down the hill, and that uh, Capri oh, well, you heard us mention, Shay John, he's actually just about to fight for second. He's closing a lot on Michael Fitzgerald, and as you say, the car Shay Lawless is driving is John's old Capri from last year, and a smoky Michael Fitzgerald is now having to fight hard. Shay Lawless in the white car there, closing in. That's true, John. It was my old car, and I sold it to you very worth the money. But you can see the smoke. If you can hear me, John, your second place man, Michael Fitzgerald, is having a problem. I can't hear you very well, unfortunately. Here he comes. Here's our winner, John Hayes. And now it's the battle for second place. Can't Fitzgerald hold out? He's closing the door, coming up the hill to Dunlop. He's got a guard his position. Oh, no, 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 no. Shay Lawless really on the boot there as they come down to the checkered flag. A smoky Capri. Will he hold out? There's the flag. Lawless looking out the outside. But Fitzgerald has it. Ten laps over an oil-covered track. Another quality.